Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Hope screen is visible. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. So in the previous classes, we have looked at how the first stage of compilation, that is lexical analysis, is being carried out. In the process, we have seen how automation or automata theory will help the designer to, without any ambiguous, to write grammar or maybe to represent the constructs or to represent the character set per se was looked at. And hope you are all comfortable in dealing with those uh, automata, and they are very important from examination point of view. Not only from examination point of view, as a designer should understand how automation is going to help the designer while building the compiler. So they will make the work easier because all the options, all the possibilities can be checked out. So once you are clear with the diagram then it is only a question of implementing in the programming language which should not be taking much time. So thinking process is done through the automation or automata theory. Now having done with the lexical analysis which confirms that all the input my program has is as per the character set of my given programming language or compiler then I have to make sure that these characters whether they follow certain grammar or certain rules of the requirement. For example, in even in English, we have so many characters, A, B, C, D, E, F. If I, if I write A, B, C, D, E, F, it has no meaning, but I need to form a, a word out of it. I need to form a meaningful sentence out of it where I need to do permutations and combinations of characters such that I can identify them as a, a formal constructs of a language called English. In the same type here, even though we have various characters out of the character set of a compiler, we need to make sure that these characters are grouped together such that a common or a meaningful or a predefined meaning is given. Simply to take a C programming, for example, printf, P-R-I-N-T-F. We know that there are so many characters involved here, P-R-I-N-T-F. But they should be coming in the same format. That is, first letter should be P, followed by R, followed by N, followed by I, followed by N, followed by T, followed by F, followed by left parenthesis, followed by left right parenthesis, followed by semicolon. All these things we are telling it as a, a construct, meaning that these constructs are predefined and the user, the programmer who is writing the program should also follow I mean, follow this type of constructs in the same manner. Even one character here and there, if you shift, you will be getting a lot of compilation errors that you have observed. How the system is providing them as errors? Because the syntax analysis is playing a major and critical role to ascertain that whatever the data we have used or whatever the constructs we have used or whatever the sentences we have written in the language of a given compiler, like C, C++, Java or whatever it is, they are not in line or they are not complying with the whatever the constructs of that particular language which are predefined. So who is predefining that? Your compiler is predefining. So why they are predefined? Because you want the design of your compiler such that these things should be there as it is. You and me cannot change because design is already completed. Only thing is we have to use the given language which is in comply with the compiler or with the, whatever the compiler we are working with. We will not be able to change them unless there is a flexibility for us to change. So if that is the case, syntax analysis is the one which is going to confirm that the language what we are having in consideration and whatever the constructs it has in place, 
are used by the programmer while developing the program under that particular language. So more so, lot of constructs, lot of grammars, lot of rules are going to be in place. And syntax analysis is very, very important and critical because the compiler is going to check each and every sentence right from the beginning, whether they comply with the rules which are already defined as part of the compiler. This is the concept of a syntax analysis. In the first case in the lexical analysis, we make sure the characters are as per the character set. Next, we'll see whether these characters are properly aligned such that these characters have some meaning. So syntax and semantics both will be part of this particular concept or context where we are working on the second stage. So syntax analysis is represented in terms of a diagram again called as a parse tree. So a parse tree is the one which is going to help us to understand what a syntax analysis for a given construct. So by representing the given sentence or given uh, actual framework or rule in terms of parse tree, we can again analyze like automata for lexical analysis, whether they comply with the given rules of the grammar or not. So the process of entire syntax analysis thereby is also called as a parsing. Why? Because we write a parse tree, there will go by parsing means just checking with one after the other uh, whether the constructs are going to make sure that the given language is being used properly. Then we call them as a syntax analysis and this is carried out through a concept called as a parse tree and thereby syntax analysis is also called with another name by name parsing. So parsing and syntax analysis are two synonyms for the second stage of compilation whereas lexical analysis scanning are the two names what we had for the lexical analysis at the first stage of the compilation. So in the second stage syntax analysis we look at various procedures that involve while making the syntax analysis and these procedures are categorically divided into two things or two procedures rather or two techniques by name bottom up techniques and the top down techniques. It precisely depend on how we are going to construct the tree. If the tree is constructed from leaf nodes to the root node or from the terminal symbols to the non-terminal symbols, then we call that as a, a bottom up technique. And the other category is a top down technique where we start from the root node, then we'll drill down to the leaf nodes or we start from the main non-terminal symbol and will come down till the terminal symbol. So either way, the construction of a parse tree is going to be there and the construction procedure is only is going to define or identify or differentiate which technique we are using. It can be either bottom up technique or it can be a top down technique. So before we go to further details, let us understand some of the examples that are being used in this particular discussion. We consider Pascal language. Hope you remember there are so many languages in computer science. You might have born with knowing C, C++, Java, but before that we had a COBOL, before that we had Pascal, we had, we had basic, we had so many other languages through which we all learned. Even when we were students somewhere in 25 years back, we studied Pascal as a language. So later Pascal was removed and C language and was being introduced as a initial level programming. But see, Pascal was being used earlier stages. This is one of the, the procedure oriented uh, high, high level language. And today, or maybe in the compiler design, we are also going to use some of the constructs of a Pascal. But here, don't worry, don't get confused with the C or C++ or Pascal. What we have to see here is, let it be anything. It is obviously you as a designer who is going to fix this is how my sentence should be looking at. So once you freeze that, then it comes to the what you call implementation thing. So it is not the question of what is the sentence we have or which language we are considering, but it is a question of how we are going to be able to understand the process involved in this. That is the main crux. So look from a process perspective, not from the language perspective. The same syntax analysis you can use for the C language, C++, any language, but you should understand the basic idea behind each of these stages irrespective of the whatever the language we take. So once a statement is fixed, once a rule is fixed, once a grammar is fixed, it is only a next step where we are going to map whether my programming 
instruction what i have in my hand is as per the whatever the compiler rule i have or a grammar i have with me on the other hand if that is the case so whatever the rule we write whatever the language we take is immaterial but the process involved is what we are going to understand so probably you should be able to try to understand the process behind this so clear now so where we are at syntax analysis syntax analysis is mainly going to check the actual constructs with which a programming language is made up of later to analyze the syntax analysis we create parser trees and thereby syntax analysis is also called as parsing because parser trees are developed or designed here and there are two ways or two techniques rather through which this parsing can be done one can be either through bottom up approach or from the top down approach so this approach is basically depend how we are going to construct the tree if we are constructing the tree from terminal nodes to non terminal nodes we call it as a bottom up approach if the tree is constructed using non terminal nodes until the terminal symbols or terminal nodes then we call them as a top down approach so before we go in let us look at the pascal as a language for which we are going to discuss how the syntax analysis or future code generation is going to be done okay so we know that parsing has two ways one is a top down approach other one is a bottom up approach so this is how the probably i suggest you if you don't have a book a, to copy this constructs because we'll be reusing that it's better to have in the exam also if they give like this you should not be able to confuse maybe you can take 5 minutes from now try to copy this whatever is there on the screen right now so you can take pen and paper and start copying so meanwhile let me complete attendance
your attendance as the Are we now? Aishwarya? Present, sir. Ambrish? Anu? Present, sir. Arbaz? Arjun? Present, sir. Ashok? Present, sir. Vinita? Bhargavi? Bhavisha? Present, sir. Chaitra? Present, sir. Chatterjee? Diksha? Present, sir. Deepika LG? Present, sir. Deepika MB? Present, sir. Murli Krishna? Present, sir. Gangubai? Present, sir. Guria Kumari. Harshit. Present, sir. Junjar Singh. Kavya. Present, sir. Ishor. Present, sir. Lata. Yes, sir. Manisha. Manjunath. Yes, sir. Nayana. Nilanjan. Yes, sir. Nishant. Pavitra. Present, sir. Maithili. Present, sir. Priyanka. Present, sir. Pavan. Akash. Present, sir. Rajeshwari. Present, sir. Rakesh. Present, sir. Ramya. Oh, present, sir. Ah, okay. Ramya. Rashmi. Ravi Shankar. Sir. Yeah, okay. Sir, Ravi yes, sir, present. Ah, Ravi Shankar. Rizwan. Vishal. Present, sir. Savita. Yes, sir. Shruti. Present, sir. Sneha. Yes, sir. Spurti. Present, sir. Srinidhi. Present, sir. Srinivas. Present, sir. Sunil. Vaishnavi. Present, sir. Vinay. Shall I call in half an hour? I'll just finish class and call it. Is copied? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So this is how the parse tree looks. Okay. So for the above grammar, the we have written parse tree for the line number 13. Look at the line number 13. The read statement. So this is a Pascal grammar. So how Pascal program looks like. So in this, let us look at some important sentences which you need to understand, which are frequently used rather. This ID list is used. Six. Statement is used. Assign is used. Expression is used. Term is used. Factor is used, read is used. So these are the normally used internally while taking the examples. And you should keep these 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, just to handy as we discuss. Okay. Now we are talking about this one. That is read statement. So in Pascal, read small letter R E A D is written as that is scope resolution operator equal 
as a capital R E A D within parenthesis I D list. Then what is I D list? Is it a terminal symbol or a non-terminal symbol? What is I D list? Is it terminal or non-terminal? Anyone? Is it enclosed in angle brackets or not? I have some answers. Is this a terminal symbol or not? You defined earlier which are enclosed within angle brackets or what? Which are not enclosed in angle brackets or what? How do you differentiate? So two things we have to keep in mind. One is a terminal symbol, another is a non-terminal. These are very technical words. If you do not understand, then you will not be able to follow. So I want to answer for this. The ID list which is marked here in red at line number 13. Is it a terminal symbol or a non-terminal symbol? If you don't give answer, I am not interested to go forward. Sir, they are terminal, sir. Terminal. So what is a terminal symbol? How do you define? Sir, enclosed bracket, sir. Enclosed bracket is a terminal or non-terminal? Terminal, sir. Non-terminal, sir. Hmm. So non-terminal, sir. So enclosed. Okay, there are only two options. Either terminal, non-terminal. If not terminal, non-terminal. If not non-terminal, terminal. That is not the way. You should have no ambiguity in understanding this. You already seen that. Something if it is enclosed within angle brackets is a non-terminal, meaning that it can be further defined. If it is a terminal, it is not enclosed in angle brackets, meaning that is end. That is a leaf node. That is a leaf node in the parse tree. So leaf nodes in the parse tree are terminal symbols which are not enclosed in the angle brackets. If something is enclosed in angle brackets, that is not end. That can be further divided. So if you look at line number 13 here, the read statement on the right hand side is defined as capital R E A D within parenthesis ID list, where ID list is a non-terminal symbol, meaning that it has one more definition somewhere on the left side. You have to see from the top where ID list is here. So ID list is here. So ID list is a non-terminal symbol. This is another way of making out whether it is a terminal or not. All the symbols on the left hand side. If you observe, they're all non-terminal, meaning that they have another meaning, they have other definition rather. So which are there here, but on the right hand side, some are terminal, some are non-terminal that you can make out. So whatever you see on the left hand side, they're all non-terminal symbol because they're enclosed in the angle brackets. That is not the only reason they are further defined in order to have some more elements. That's why they're called as a non-terminal symbols. They're all within the root root to last but one node they cannot be part of the leaf node because they are having a some more definition further can be possible whereas on the right hand side they can be terminal or a non-terminal in our case called a read statement we have got one more non-terminal which is part of a definition of a another non-terminal symbol then we need to figure out what is id list it should be somewhere here yes it is found at line number six what is id list ID list is a non-terminal symbol. It is defined as either ID, either ID or you can see R symbol. It can be ID list comma ID, meaning that you write normally int A or int A comma B comma C like that. So I can have ID list means identifiers. Identifiers can be one, 
or it can be more than one separated by comma it can be comma separated numbers i mean in identifiers also that is the meaning of this this is called as a recursive definition for a id list meaning this id list is defined again with id list it is called as a recursive definition of a id list so we can have a single id or it can be more than one id but it ends with an id so thereby there is no ambiguity there is a definite information or definition for this which is a containing a terminal symbol you can see id id there is no angle brackets meaning that it is a terminal symbol so all terminal symbols are written here in bold way so that you can make out and you can also see that they do not have any angle brackets they are all terminal symbols so that is the concept so terminal symbols do not have angle brackets and they are going to be leaf nodes whenever there is a parse tree so our interest is now this read statement how parse tree is written now if you look at this this is a parse tree for read statement so read read is the statement on the left hand side which is a non terminal symbol this is defined into four terms how one capital r e i d one left parenthesis one i d one right parenthesis so if i write this this id is a value and value is going to be id list so that thereby i can make sure that this is a parse tree which is a valid parse tree for a read statement is it correct or not let us see there is a read capital read do we have read yes then what we have we have a left parenthesis do we have a left parenthesis here yes we have a left parenthesis then what do we have we have a id here what is id id is a value so what is this we are reading id list what is id list id list can be id so id or more than one id is going to constitute id list so even if i have a single id that can be converted into id list so one value if i say read 20 20 or read abc that is going to be one id thereby it clears the whatever is required here then followed by right parenthesis so we have a right parenthesis so everything what is defined in the read statement of pascal has been used here thereby we say this is a parse tree for read statement so anything that we have in future as an example if this matches this i can say this can be considered as a read statement if any one is not matching then obviously that is not going to be part of the read statement thereby we say that that is a invalid and your compiler projects that as a compilation error any one is missing here is going to be considered as a an error here similarly there is an assignment statement here and we have taken assignment statement in a bigger way so probably we'll discuss this later but right now see how parse trees are written so assign is what assign is a non terminal symbol we can see this here somewhere we have seen assign yes assign is what is a non terminal symbol so that's why it is on the root now all others at the bottom see id id is what terminal what is id terminal what is int terminal what is id terminal what is id terminal so we have id and int as a leaf nodes look if they are the terminal values just now we have seen that we have id we have int they are all terminal symbols this is how we have to figure out so in a leaf in a parse tree whatever you see at the bottom they are going to be leaf nodes which are going to be terminal symbols all other cases you can see factor you can see term you can see exp you can see assign they are all non terminal symbols that's what we have here they are all where are the position they are position in anywhere other than the leaf nodes that is the idea with which parse tree has been constructed so for every given input we can develop a parse tree and if if you can trace back to your leaf node from the root then we can say the whatever the information you have given as a part of the programming language that can be considered as a, a valid information or a valid program construct so this is basically the idea behind how a syntax analysis is done through a parse tree but that is not our end of this discussion we have to go in deep about the techniques which are going to be used in the 
parsing. We just now seen that we have two techniques. One is a bottom up technique. Other one is top down techniques. So these two techniques, we know that the process remains same. But only thing is the way we accomplish the process is going to identify whether it is a bottom up or a top down. If you start from a root node and go up to the leaf node, that means you start from a non-terminal symbol and go up to the terminal symbol, then we call it as a top down approach. Or on the other hand, if you start from a leaf node and build the tree up to the root node, or you start from a terminal symbol and go to the non-terminal symbol in this pipeline, we call it as a, a bottom-up approach. So both are going to be used in the syntax analysis or parsing, depending upon the type of techniques we have, but the outcome is same. What is the outcome? To check whether the given construct, what is there in the part of the programming language, is complying as per the compiler design or not. If it is there, we say it is a valid. Otherwise, we say there is some error and compiler throws some errors and it is our responsibility as a programmer to rectify those errors so that the modified versions of the program will be in line with the syntax of the given compilation or the given compiler. So that is the idea behind syntax analysis. So this, there are three methods which are used here as far as the syntax analysis is concerned or a parsing is concerned. The first one is a operator precedence parsing, operator precedence parsing. Then we have a recursive descent parsing, recursive descent parsing. Third one is shift reduce parsing. It is not reduce, it is reduce, shift reduce parsing. So to brief you, better to have a hyphen here, operator precedence parking, parsing, recursive descent parsing, and shift reduce parsing. So they are not some separate words. They are being coined such that there is some meaning behind each of these names. So one is operator precedent parsing, recursive descent parsing, shift reduce parsing. To provide them under one of these categories, operator precedence parsing is a bottom up approach recursive descent is a top down approach and shift reduce is a bottom up approach okay we have three methods here clubbed into two different categories maybe bottom up or up, top down how you figure out which is bottom up top down you will understand right now you may not be able to perceive now it is not the way to buy heart here but to just give an idea how these three are categorized into two, we have given. But as we know the process, you can easily understand why operator precedence is a bottom up, why shift reduce, I mean, recursive descent is a top down, and shift reduce is a bottom up. So just understand the names here operator precedence, recursive descent, and shift reduce are the three parsing techniques what we are going to see now in the syntax analysis, which eventually fall either bottom up or a top down. And this is listed for our understanding as we go now probably we'll be able to understand so let us go with the first one that is the operator parsing sir operator precedence parsing which is called as a opp in short form and we know that operator precedence parsing is a bottom-up approach just now we have mentioned and we conclude that it is going to be of this category probably will appreciate when you take an example Operator precedence is a bottom-up approach. And as name says precedence, it is basically involving our precedence and associativity rules of programming languages. It is based on that particular concept. So depending upon that, it is going to make sure whether the given values or the uh, given constructs are going to follow. It has its own plus and minus. Let us go through the process. Probably you will be able to understand. So as the name says precedence, Every construct in the programming language, every construct in the programming language should have some precedence. Okay. Can anybody throw some light on precedence rules, what we know in C or C++ before we go to the discussion? We have precedence and associativity rules, which you might have seen in C and C++. So probably if can someone help me.
what is the precedence and what is the associativity precedence associativity what is precedence precedence rules in the operations maybe mathematical expressions like uh, which comes first like okay uh, any example okay. uh, when when we are doing uh, arithmetic like uh, first we do multiplication mm -hmm. then division then addition and subtraction okay so it is like bartmash rule yes yes sir. kind of okay. yeah so that is the precedence so when i have 2 plus 3 into 5 when i have a 2 plus 3 into 5 how to get the result someone you some of you will say it is value is 30 some of you will say the value is uh, maybe again 30 because <laughs> both the ways we are getting 30 or maybe uh, let me take 4 into 3 into 5 4 in sorry 4 plus 3 into 5 4 plus 3 into 5 or 4 plus 3 into 5 so you will get different results but result cannot be like this that cannot be ambiguous there should be some rule so when i say 4 plus 3 into 5 i should always get 32 let us say then what is the process the process is to multiply 3 into 5 first then add the result whatever we have let us say if that is the case then we will be having a challenge so we should be very careful in using these operators so when operators are used in a given expression the results will be different based on whatever the way we want if you do not give any directions probably you will be ended up getting different values at different times but if you create these precedence rules no no when i have a plus and minus sorry plus and multiplication multiplication has more precedence or more preference than the plus and minus then probably we will be working on the multiplication first than going even though plus is coming at the beginning we will not be doing addition operation but we will be doing a multiplication operation first so 2 plus 3 into 5 instead of doing 2 plus 3 then multiply the result with 5 we will be doing 3 into 5 then add 2 for that so result will be different obviously so the right way is first multiply then perform the addition with the result of the or product of the multiplication. If that is the case, we are going to provide some preference or precedence rules to avoid the ambiguity or the confusion. And again, when you have a precedence that is plus and minus star and division, there is a concept called as a associativity. Okay. When I say plus and minus have equal precedence and multiplication and division has again equal precedence between those two which one to apply when i have a situation say 2 plus 3 divided by 5 sorry 2 into 3 divided by 5 so star and division that is a multiplication and division both have equal precedence so which one to apply first when we have a equal precedence operators then whichever is there on the left should be used first or whichever is there on the right should be used first this is called as a associativity when two or more equal precedence operators are available then how to perform is it from left to right or from right to left again each language has its own preferences so before we deal with the arithmetic operations it is wise to go into the compiler how compiler has taken the precedence and associativity normally we'll take it for granted but that is not right some associativity are from left to right some associativity are from right to left which is for left to right which is for right to left is need to be understood by us as a programmer before we give our try while dealing with this so when you develop or design a compiler also you should have a clarity which operators have what type of precedence which is having higher precedence which is having a lower precedence which are having equal precedence 
all those things are required so in similar lines our operator precedence parsing is also built we will be considering which is a less pre precedence or uh, less preference value which is a higher precedence which is a equal precedence so we use three representations one for lesser precedence one for equal precedence one for higher or more precedent value if that is the case three values or three characters we are going to use before that let us understand for the given grammar we have a given grammar yes this is the grammar for us for this grammar how precedence rules are written so this is how the precedence rules are if you remember whatever the 17 just now we have taken the grammar for each of the grammar precedence is written if you look at left hand side we have certain values on right hand side some uh, some values and each value how it is going to have a precedence level hope you can see here you see some less than symbol you can also see some greater than symbol if you are not able to see let me show see there are so many less than symbols here this is called as a lesser precedence there are so many greater than symbols here which means it is a greater precedence there are some equal precedence also where you can see equal operator here so depending upon how you want we have to define this once it is defined then we can build the syntax analysis so before we build the syntax analysis if it is used using operator precedence parsing then this type of table is mandatory then based on this your compiler is going to be designed so right now we have a table with the precedence for the given 12 statement 17 statements of pascal what you have just now taken and the precedence is like this you can see three values here one is a less than value one is a greater than value other one is a equal value so depending upon the type of construct we have what is other construct we have in the same sentence or same processing then we have to make sure which is having a lesser precedence which is having a higher precedence and which is having a equal precedence so that is how the process is going to be done so the procedure for operative precedence is like this so first let us take this example to understand how this lesser or greater or equal precedence can be given so let us take a plus b into c minus d there is no parenthesis we have not given any information here how we are going to go with this so a plus b multiplication c minus d so when i take this first since it is a bottom up approach we know that operator precedence is a bottom up approach and we need to look in from the bottom to top the bottom means the internal symbols we have to consider first rather than the external symbols but this is an example to understand how this lesser or greater are given so first let me take this now so how many operators are here we have a plus we have a star we have a minus so let us compare these two now the first two operators when i compare these two plus is having a lesser precedence compared to star agree so always addition is having a lesser precedence compared to multiplication similarly multiplication has greater precedence compared to subtraction or a minus how this is shown this is shown here like this so plus is having lesser precedence compared to star and star is having greater precedence compared to minus or subtraction the star is a symbolic representation for the precedence otherwise if you simply write less than it becomes a mathematical less than but our interest is not mathematical less than our interest is to precedence so we put a small dot in between that is less than greater than or equal all three are mathematical operators just to differentiate them from mathematical operators to precedence operators we are adding one dot in between this dot will differentiate them that they are not mathematical operators of their meaning but they are the precedence but concept of less than remains same greater than remains same and equal remains same but not the value but the precedence that is the concept here so this is how the representation we have in three characters lesser precedence 
higher precedence and equal precedence so depending upon how we are going to get the expression we have to categorize like this from left to right and each pair of operators need to be compared from left to right and the corresponding symbol has to be written here now so anything that you see between one less than and another greater than that is going to be considered as a one particular symbol one particular grammar if that is the case that we are going to build a bottom up approach for the given scanner so this is just an idea for you to understand once a given expression how we are going to categorize them into various less than or a greater than or equal symbols once you know this probably we can take an example now so this is what the procedure here what is the procedure now understand the relation between each of the operator or each of the uh, operand that we have in the given operation and once that relation is known then probably we can identify which type of precedence they have so based on the precedence they have then we can categorize them with a less than symbol for lesser precedence equals um, greater than symbol for higher precedence and equal symbol for the equal precedence once that is done then we have to consider two tokens which are having a precedence and whenever they appear with the precedence with like this let us say less than and greater than we say they become a valid grammar if your data is falling between these two then we say they are bounded by the rule or the grammar thereby we say they are syntactically correct or if you see that the two tokens are not having any precedence relation then we say that they are not part of the syntax and hence we generate the syntactical error so this is how the process is done so first determine the precedence relation between the operation the how it is being done this is going to be done based on this table so this table is required for us we have to write this table once this table is written then we can identify how the each or pair of operations or operators rather are having the precedence so all possible tokens we need to consider and that relation can be considered the procedure for tokens is defined in the matrix form that's what we know based on that we can identify lesser higher or equal precedence whichever is applicable for that so while doing that once the entire thing is over if you see any tokens or any terminal symbols or non terminal symbols which fall between these two one is the less than other one is the greater than then we say that they are having a proper precedence and we can replace them with a equal precedence because they are valid for me or if you see something like this so one is the left side one is right side so they are not able to find so one is a greater than symbol other one is a less than symbol if you have something here then what is the meaning now this is not going to have any precedence as per the given grammar so it is going to be an error thereby we will be generating a syntax error so operative precedence parsing is very simple where first we need to identify the relation between each pairs of or each of the pair in the given construct and identify them in the matrix form provide their precedence levels then apply that to the given input and if the use is between less and greater than precedence then probably that is a valid grammar anything else is going to be a invalid grammar so that is the idea with which we have so these are the things we already seen now let us look at this now how operator precedence parsing can be considered for the given statement so what is the statement here the statement here is read n1 this is the input this is the input read n1 what is the input for you to identify if it is a valid or not this is the input this is the input one is the first read statement this you should write then what else wherever read is here this line this line is required for you because we need to identify what is the sir uh, screen share maadilla anustide sir andishto chumna idre matte 
ಇಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಶೇರ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ನಮಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ನಮಗೆ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಮಗೆ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ಆಗಿದೆ ಸರ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಈಕ್ವ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಈಕ್ವ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಗಿವನ್ data so read is the requirement so these two are the data for you one is this statement what is the definition for read as per the grammar and this table because we should know what is the precedence okay now read less uh, left parenthesis n1 right parenthesis is the input let us see if this is going to be the valid input or not so first read left parenthesis id right parenthesis so this id is the formula what we have here this is a formula read left parenthesis id right parenthesis since we know that we have only one id i have replaced id list with id because that is also a valid grammar so now for our understanding we have replaced because i know it is n1 is one id so instead of writing id list then id we have just for our bbt we have written as a id now the question is it is a bottom up approach what is a bottom up approach first write all these values then you figure out what is this equivalence then we try try to give the bottom up approach so between read and left parenthesis what is the preference level or precedence level how do you really know come here read up to the left parenthesis where is the left parenthesis it is here so read and left parenthesis is having what equal precedence hope you can see that now i am going to put equal here so that's why it is okay next next group is left parenthesis and id left parenthesis and id where is the left parenthesis here this is the left parenthesis where is id id is somewhere here so this is id so this is the combination so this is the less than symbol so less than so for this it is a less than now we have a id and greater than sorry right parenthesis let us see what is there id this is id where is a great right, right parenthesis right parenthesis is here that is this is the right parenthesis so the mapping is this one greater than symbol so now greater than so this is how we have marked now since operative precedence is a bottom up approach what you should be doing what is innermost what is innermost this is the innermost i said just now if you see something between left i mean less than and greater than you say that that is a valid grammar so you see now one is the less than one is the greater than so when you have that this id which is corresponding to that is going to be a valid input so corresponding to that i am going to replace with some n1 what is n1 now my n1 what i have got so it should be id and i have got n1 when i replace that it will have a equal precedence then i will go to next level what is the next level parenthesis again between this and this you should be seeing either equal or left and right so if that is the case i say it is a valid so at the end of the reading of the entire statement i see everything in between less than and greater than and also with the equal parenthesis so at the end i can replace that with a another non terminal because normally we are when you go from bottom up approach the last one should be a, a non terminal just to provide that understanding we have written it as a n2 otherwise this is what the parse tree required for our given input what is the input now read left parenthesis n1 right parenthesis so n1 is what it is a id what is id now this n1 value is part of the id so this is actually parse tree for operator precedence parsing for the given read statement whether it is a bottom up approach or not yes why it is because we have gone to the internal value later we identified whether it falls within the grammar or not once we identified then we went to the next level then next level then next level like that so from the bottom up that is from internal with the inner 
data we are moving one after the other towards the other data that is the concept of a operator precedence parsing which is a bottom up approach so hope you have understood still if you have any doubts nothing to worry we can have some more time in the next class but anyhow this is how the bottom up approach is being done so with this probably we can conclude for the day if you have any doubts probably we shall continue in the next class okay thank you any doubts no doubts hello sir yes yes sir uh, i was not hello uh, there i didn't attend it for sir call band to idu cut out sir hmm sir okay okay sir kuriya ho sir present sir kuriya ah okay sir ramya hello kidre la sir disconnect aayitu sir hmm sir benit also sir one second okay hmm next Done. This one. Huh? This one. This one. Okay. Why are you fine? This one now? Yes. Yes, sir. Everything fine at home? Yes, sir. Only during the uh, intervals it was little. Okay. Okay. What happened? Expired. Grandmother. Huh? Grandmother. Huh? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Fine. Fine. Take care. Hmm. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Then, fine. If you have no doubts, we can wind up.